Jason Dixon, as you said, clearly has been the leader of the pack. JB Chemicals is also a sh a seeing a very sharp move. I mean, we are flashing at the bottom of the screen. Kotak, I think, has initiated coverage. Uh, and uh, they're calling it out as a great performer business-wise. Harsha Upadhyay is with us, CIO, Equity, Kotak Mutual Fund. Harsha, good morning. Good to have you with us here. <clears throat> Thanks for your time. Uh, so, you know, the just market just continues to chug along very, very nicely. Very few hiccups, if at all, uh, Harsha. And now, of course, we're in the earnings season and the budget, etc. is in front of us. Uh, what's your mental makeup as you kind of approach markets, as you continue to deploy? Because, uh, I mean, mutual funds are getting uh, enough flows. I mean, SIP book is now uh, the highest ever. Just your sense, uh, how are you approaching things, Harsha? Uh, good morning, Prashant. Uh, clearly, the undertone seems to be quite positive even now. Uh, however, we do believe that uh, given the strong performance that we have seen over the past few quarters, uh, there could be a consolidation phase uh, uh, coming in. Uh, as far as earnings are concerned, we still expect about mid-teens kind of earnings for this year as well as uh, uh, next year going forward. So overall, uh, uh, there are no fundamental concerns as such. However, the valuations remain high. So to that extent, you will have to pick your stocks and sectors uh, wisely. Uh, so, though, uh, so that your uh, portfolio is not very aggressive and you are not uh, prone to too much of volatility in case uh, that volatility uh, starts to show up. Uh, that's that's what uh, we need to do at this point of time. Mm. Uh, Harsha, hi. Good morning and thanks for joining in. We have so many big events lined up this month, right? It's not even funny. You have the union budget, there are Q1 earnings. There's, of course, the monsoon progress that everyone's looking at very closely. Uh, and a whole host of other barometers like auto sales, etc. Uh, do you think the market has enough ammunition to build on to its gains? Is there something in the union budget that can sort of fire up the animal spirits further? Uh, difficult to say that, uh, Sonia, because most of the positives have uh, already been discounted. Uh, the only thing is uh, the government has got additional uh, income in the form of uh, dividend from RBI, which was more than expected. Uh, that's close to about 30 basis points of GDP. So whether that will be put to use and what kind of use is, is something that market is looking forward to. And also there are a uh, little bit of concerns in terms of whether uh, there could be potentially some taxation changes uh, regarding equity as an asset class. If those concerns don't play out and if we see uh, higher investments going into productive uh, investments, uh, I, I would say that uh, there, there could be some upside in the very short term. However, the valuations uh, anyways are, are at a higher end. So to that extent, the base case should not be to expect uh, too much of uh, uptake post-budget. Okay. Hi, Asha. Good morning and good to see you, Ben. What about tech? You know, I think a couple of months or so ago, you all were relatively underweight tech in comparison to the benchmark. How are you all placed on IT right now? Because suddenly you're getting some sound bites that are coming in that, that may be bulk of the bad news is in the price and maybe you'll not lose too much money on IT from here. What's the view? Uh, Nigel, we also have more or less similar view. Uh, we have up the uh, IT exposure in the recent weeks. Uh, not very much. We, we still hold an underweight uh, exposure to the sector. But however, we have reached some of the under, underweight exposure uh, in, in this sector by buying into some names. Uh, we do believe that uh, there may not be anything uh, very exciting in terms of numbers uh, pertaining to this quarter. However, uh, given how some of the other sectors, which are mostly domestic focused, have performed in terms of stock prices, uh, we do believe that it's prudent to take out uh, some money from those sectors and put it into uh, so-called uh, defensive uh, uh, bets in the portfolio. And IT happens to be uh, one of them. Hmm. Uh, you know, we were just talking about some of the, uh, you know, we were highlighting Dixon earlier, uh, Harsha, EMS companies, uh, again, what's the, the the scope is huge and the numbers are going to be big and they're small right now relatively where they can be five, ten years uh, down the line because the focus very much is trying to make as much as here as possible, right? Electronics manufacturing. Uh, but uh, it's the question of what we're already paying and how much are we discounting, Harsha? So how do you look at it and uh, what are you comfortable with there? Uh, without getting into stock specifics, clearly uh, there are uh, many areas within industrials and manufacturing, including EMS, uh, where valuations are uh, really expensive. Uh, so to that extent, while uh, the medium to long-term growth continues to be very, very strong and could even surprise positively at, at uh, some places, uh, one has to be cognizant of uh, current valuations and, and uh, keep uh, 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 some buffer in terms of uh, 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 
the firepower that you that you can put into this particular uh, segment. So what we have done over the last few weeks is we have taken out some money out of uh, industrial, some money out of auto auto components, and and moved that into banking and uh, IT, uh, mostly uh, uh, you know, to make sure that our portfolio doesn't become too aggressive, and in term in times of volatility it should also get protected on the downside. So that's the view. And we do believe that uh, 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 within the defensive bets, so uh, banking is something uh, probably uh, hasn't performed uh, that well over the last uh, several quarters. And also coming to earnings specifically this quarter, there should not be any uh, 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 significant negatives. So to that extent, it's a good uh, defensive bet. And so is uh, probably uh, IT. Okay. What about telecom? <coughs> That's really been the where all the action has been over the last uh, you know fortnight or so. And rightfully so, right? After so long, there are tariff hikes coming through here. Any um, further upsides in the telecom space that you're looking at? See, most market participants were expecting a tariff hike and that has come through. So to that extent, I think uh, whatever was expected by majority of the market has come through. The, now the next big trigger would be if there is any, uh, uh, any, any more thinking on the AGR and if there is any progress on those lines. Uh, probably that could be another positive, but I think uh, most of the short-term positives are already in the price and and uh, valuations have taken care of that. Okay, I know Harsha, the two sectors that you liked, one was I think auto ancillary and industrials. Let's talk about the autos. What do you like from there? I think you were leaning towards two wheelers earlier. How are your place right now on autos and is the preference for auto ancillaries in comparison to autos or are you going in with a mix of both? Uh, Nigel, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, taken out some uh, profits out of uh, auto and auto components in the recent times. Uh, we are still overweight on the sector, but we do believe that uh, uh, most of the positives in the very short term have been discounted. And also the monthly uh, sale na sales numbers that we are going to see now uh, onwards uh, could be a little subdued compared to what we have seen in the recent history. Uh, so to that extent, uh, the earnings trend may not be as exciting as uh, what we had seen in the past couple of quarters. Uh, however, we still continue to have an overweight. Uh, the bias within uh, auto um, auto sector would be towards two wheelers as earlier, uh, where we believe uh, there is still some need to be made. Mm, okay, so that's on the auto space. Got it. Uh, before we let you go, I wanted your thoughts. Uh, you know, just to understand whether any of these spaces which were um, fancied over the last one to two years will continue to see traction. Whether it is uh, power, power financers defense, railways, affordable housing, right? I mean, that's been a big focus area for the government. Uh, any of these spaces that you think could continue to gain traction despite the rally that we've already seen? Uh, we clearly continue to be positive on all of this from a, a longer term perspective. And also, as we discussed earlier, uh, there is um, uh, uh, another 30 basis points of our GDP, which is available for uh, further investments into some of these sectors if government uh, intends to do that. I think that's something uh, uh, that could be watched very keenly uh, during the budget uh, announcements. And if that were to happen, then I think uh, some of these uh, sectors can have a, a lot more growth than what market is anticipating right now and could be a trigger for further performance from here on. Okay. Uh, got that, Hasha. Uh, thank you for being with us on the show. Appreciate your time, uh, you know, and patience always. Thanks for joining in. Uh, well, for the market,